Today we're going to go over the very basic concepts of ionic compounds and covalent compounds and just what they're made of and how they compare to each other. So ionic compounds are going to be made up of a cation, which is our positive ion. Remember cats have paws, cations are positively charged, and an anion, which is going to be our negative ion. In general, whenever we look at the periodic table, and we're trying to figure out whether or not something is going to be a cation or someone is going to be an anion. A good rule of thumb is that my cations are going to be my metals and my anions are going to be my non-metals. Now remember that my metals are going to be anything to the left of this staircase line and my non-metals are going to be anything to the right. So my ionic compounds literally have ions in them, and this is because they are made of ions, and ions have an imbalance of electrons to protons. So they happen because of a transfer of electrons from my metal to my nonmetal. So my metal, my cation, is going to be the one that is going to lose electrons. Therefore, it will have a positive charge because it will have more protons than, elect than electrons. Whereas my non-metal, the one who stole those electrons from the metal, will have a negative charge because it will have more electrons than protons. When I'm dealing with ionic compounds, I have to have a net charge. This is going to be my comparison charge of zero meaning I have to have all of my electrons accounted for. Every single electron that was stolen from the metal must be accounted for with the charge of my non-metal. So I have to have the equal and opposite charge for my cation and my anion. So if my cation is positive two, my anion has to have a charge of negative two. We have to have a counterbalance so that my net charge is always zero. We are going to be following the octet rule. The octet rule, this is going to be uh, how you determine if we are going to lose electrons or gain electrons and how many you are going to lose and gain. The octet rule is uh, just going to be those atoms actually acting out their desire to be like the noble gases. Remember that my noble gases are in column 8A which means that they have eight valence electrons with the exception of helium, who only has two. And since they have eight valence electrons, they have a complete octet. Everybody wants to become like the noble gases. So everybody is going to either steal enough electrons to have eight, or they are going to donate or give away enough electrons so that they fall back to uh, a full octet set. So that is everything that makes up an ionic compound with both cations and anions, metals and non-metals. And we are going to go ahead and move into our second type of compound. And that is going to be our covalent compounds. So our covalent compounds function differently than our ionics. They are uh, very, very different. My covalent compounds, instead of stealing electrons, they're going to share electrons. My covalents cooperate. They share those valence electrons because I cannot have any charges with my covalent compounds. Since I do not steal any electrons and I don't give away any electrons, I'm just sharing custody of them. I do not have an imbalance of protons and electrons. And I am going to be made up of non-metals only. Now again, a reminder, my non-metals are going to be my elements to the right of the staircase. They're going to share those electrons because they all are super close to having that octet and they are desperate. And so they are so desperate to have a complete octet that they're like, ah, oh, screw it, sure, I'll share. And so these bad guys, these thieves, will work together and they will cooperate to make sure that everybody has at least access to eight valence electrons, even if they don't fully own eight 
valence electrons.